to project a point onto a line, what we're doing is we're making a line, and you take a point anywhere, and projecting it means a special shortest distance perpendicular. So that's what projecting means. So uh, wherever it is, and you have a line, you can always get that short. Uh, what was the, uh, what did we do with vectors last year where we did a shortest distance from a point to a plane? You remember doing that? It's kind of similar, but a little bit different technique. So strap on. This one's a little bumpy. OK, you ready? So we're going to take a point x, y, and we're going to find that shortest distance here. The way we're going to do it is the way we did yesterday, where we break it into two elementary vectors. We're going to start with this one, which is my 1, 0, we call E1. We do that first. And we're going to make two triangles. We're going to make a triangle here. Here's your B, and here's A, and this is O. And we're going to drop a perpendicular, which we like to do, and make a point C. Now that will have two triangles, a triangle, a right triangle here, which is O, B, and C, and then a second triangle, which is going to be O, B, and we're going to make this one A out here. And that one is perpendicular. Give me a chance, would you draw those two in there? Then we're going to go back to our trick training three years ago. Four years ago? Three. Four years ago. And this distance from O, well, from O to A, we're calling this a uh, elementary. This was going to be a length one because that's the length of an elementary vector. Okay, and then this one here we're going to call a B. This one here is O B. This one here is B C O B and O C. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one just to sneak one thing. What is the cosine? of alpha. This is angle alpha, and this is angle alpha, right? Both of these are alphas. What's the cosine of alpha in this big triangle? OB over what? One. One, right? So it's just OB. So whenever we see OB, we can replace it with the cosine of alpha. Now, I'm going to do a new cosine of alpha for this one. This is going to be a little different because it's not length 1 anymore, this is going to be OC over what? OB, and then the sine of alpha here is going to be what? BC over OB. Alright, so now, if I want to find... What am I looking for here? I'm trying to find the tang... Oh, yeah. So I, eventually what I want to know is, is what is this distance OC? Because we're doing this transformation, right? We want to know this distance OC, and I want to know this distance OB, because that's going to be my XY. And that's the elementary... This is what is going to take that transformation for E1 to get to this point. Okay? So to get to that point, uh, let's see. OC is cosine alpha times OB. What was OB again? Cosine alpha. That's OC. So OC is cosine alpha squared alpha, cosine times cosine. What is BC going to be? Sine alpha times what? OB, which is cosine alpha. So this is going to be cosine alpha times sine alpha. And that's the transformation for that. Similar, similar, you're going to do the same kind of thing with the 
this being one for E1, and they, they're going to break this up. And you can read this one if you want, but it's going to be the second one, E2, which instead of 0, 1, is going to be um, OC over BC for this new, this new OC over BC, which is the sine of alpha, cosine of alpha, over sine squared. Do you want me to prove that? It's the same stuff, it's just different triangles. Are you okay with that? So when you put those two together, I think it's kind of overkill. Once I've shown you the one way to do the other one, it's just kind of showing off. I don't want to be all about showing off. So E, the transformation for the um, point is going to be the first one, which is cosine squared, alpha, cosine, alpha, sine alpha. And then the other one is going to be sine alpha, cosine alpha, over sine squared alpha. Now, what's the determinant? I should make this A, not T. What's the determinant of this? Can you just look at it and tell me? Cosine squared sine squared minus product cosine squared sine squared, this one's zero. You know what that means? To what? It, it destroys the It does nothing to what? It destroys the points area or destroys the line. Area. So here it is uh, yeah. Remember the shear? When we took this point here, and then we moved it like this. Let's see, I think it was like that, didn't we? So what you're doing, what you're doing is when you're moving that, when you're shearing that over, the area stays exactly the same. I didn't draw that right, though. I think it was like this, and the shear would be like that. How does the area of this first one compare to the area of this green one? Equal. What was the determinant of that shear? One. What does that mean? That area is the same. Uh, if the determinant equals zero, I don't think you can say that that area is the same. It means something a little bit different. It gets rid of the area. If you map a circle on there, it'll get rid of all the area. So, magnitude or the determinant. Oh, how can you use this to explain? Yeah, that they ask you about that. So that's kind of cool. So it says, uh, for this example, find the projection of this point. We use m is equal to one half, and then you just go ahead and and uh, figure out, let's see, projection of this onto that. And uh, then when we did this, oh, what we didn't use M. What we did is we said, OK, the tangent of alpha, or M, is equal to 1 half. You generate sine alpha and cosine alpha, and then those go into your formula that we had. The formula was cosine squared alpha sine alpha, cosine alpha, sine alpha, cosine alpha, sine squared alpha, okay? And then you put these values in, and that's how those numbers come, and then everything else is the same. So going back to that problem you asked about, number three, it says find the projection of four, negative one onto the line. First thing that you want to do is you go y is equal to negative 3x. So what's the tangent of theta equal to? Negative 3 over 1. Okay? So the sine, well, what I would do is I'd make a triangle then. Here's alpha. What goes over here? Negative 3 here? 1. So you got to be careful, though. Um, for tangent, you're right, negative 3. This would actually be looking like this, negative 3 and 1. Are you okay with that? 
it's the same thing, but it might look a little. We're in quadrant four for tangent alpha negative. So then what happens is, is that this is the square root of what? 10. So what's the cosine of alpha? 1 over square root of 10. What's the sine of alpha? Negative 3 over the square root of 10. And then can you do all this other stuff? Or do you want me to show you a quick game? Do you like this so far? Is this part okay? So then if I gave you the formula, cosine squared, uh, sine, cosine, sine, cosine, sine squared, if I gave you that, could you put those in? So this would, this A would just be equal to one-tenth negative three-tenths, um, negative three-tenths, and nine-tenths. I'll oh, maybe apply those to four different points. And then you would just multiply to get x prime, y prime. You just take that one-tenth. You're going sine times cosine, so you'd have one times negative three, but these ten root of tens would work out, and that's okay. X Y, and then once I give you, once you have these formulas, one, uh, x over ten minus three x yeah, three y over ten y prime is equal to negative three x over ten plus nine y over ten. You feel better? And then you just put these, that point in. Then you get the point. Four and negative one. And then you can get the translated point. Is that all they're asking in that one? Wow. That's kind of cool. It's like four and negative one, right? Four, negative one. So this is x, this is y. So the new x prime is going to be 4 tenths minus a negative 3 tenths, 7 tenths. And y prime is equal to negative 12 tenths minus 9 tenths, which is negative eight, uh, 21 tenths. So my, my um, new translated point x prime y prime is going to be 7 tenths negative 21 tenths. What do you think? I'm disappointed. I always like it when it's uh, 1 less than 3 tenths. 1 tenth less than 3 tenths. I like when it's just 2 tenths in here. Forget it. It's not funny because you don't have no one no one should laugh at that. All right, so then uh, that's right. That's all. So there's your point.